Okay, hello everybody and welcome to uh, this virtual uh, seminar, a community update during uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's October 2020 and we're happy to present this to you uh, as we have uh, in the past in person. My name is Dr. Brian O'Hay. I'm one of the breast surgeons and I'm director of the Carol Baldwin Breast Care Center and associate professor of clinical surgery at Stony Brook and I'm happy to spend some time with you today. My talk is Breast Conserving Surgery in Patients with Breast Cancer, Obstacles and Opportunities. This is our team. We have a great team of breast surgeons, Dr. Farrelly, Dr. Bakoulis, and myself. Very lucky to have such great partners. We're going to talk briefly about breast cancer epidemiology, how we went from mastectomy to breast conserving therapy, which is lumpectomy and radiation, obstacles, opportunities, and future directions. First of all, breast cancer epidemiology. If we look in 2020, you can see on the right side, breast cancer is the most common cancer in American women, and prostate the most common cancer in American uh, men. And you can see in both cases followed by lung uh, and uh, colon cancer. But since lung cancer tends to be a harder cancer to beat, it accounts for more deaths from cancer uh, than breast cancer and lung cancer not breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer death in women. If you look at these graphs, these are trends in incidence and survival. Now incidence is the cancer detection rate. And on the left side, figure seven shows over the years the rate of incidence or growth or diagnoses of breast cancer is very steady. And it's pretty steady across the board in all different ethnic groups. The good news is if you look at the right side of the slide, figure eight, you can see a dramatic reduction in breast cancer mortality or breast cancer deaths that started right around 1995 with a downward slope uh, in breast cancer mortality and death, uh, which continues on into today's time. If you look at uh, rates by New York State, it's interesting. This is a color-coded county map in New York State where the darkest purple has the higher breast cancer rates followed by the, the green has the lowest. And you can see, you know, Suffolk County is somewhere towards the top, but certainly not at the top. There are plenty of dark-coated counties with a higher incidence rate in New York State uh, than Suffolk County. But still, Suffolk County is, is certainly uh, above the, the median or the average. You know, for many, many years, for 100 years probably, the standard treatment for breast cancer was mastectomy, removing the entire breast. But there were alternatives that developed to mastectomy, naming lumpectomy with radiation, also called breast conserving therapy or breast conservation therapy, where only the lump is removed and the remaining breast tissue is treated by radiation. In fact, in June 1990, that's 30 years ago, there was a large conference convened by all sorts of statisticians, doctors, nurses, other healthcare professionals, and the public, and they discussed 30 years ago the role of breast conserving therapy versus mastectomy, and they recommended that breast conservation therapy is an appropriate method of treatment for most women with stage 1 and stage 2 breast cancer, and is preferable because it provides survival rates equivalent to mastectomy while preserving the breast. But there still are some obstacles. There are some obstacles to acceptance of breast conserving surgery. And here's a list of some of the obstacles that we he have. First of all would be fear or the inconvenience of radiation. Many women may not be able to go for radiation treatments. Radiation is an integral part of uh, post lumpectomy treatment when you preserve the breast. Sometimes access or fears or, or positioning can be difficult. Uh, that's uncommon, but it can occur. The good news is that the radiation treatments in more recent years have moved from seven weeks uh, to four weeks time, Monday through Friday. Uh, one of the other concerns about breast conserving surgery is whether there could be higher recurrence rates than there is with mastectomy, and that's true, mildly elevated, not terribly so. There could be a deformity, the ongoing surveillance that's required in terms of ongoing mammograms and screening. There have been some tremendous advances in performance of mastectomy where we can do more cosmetic mastectomies, sometimes a nipple sparing mastectomy. And uh, for those reasons, 
sometimes in certain situations, mastectomy can be uh, an option that's a reasonable choice. There are genetics issues, and there is uh, MRI with occult disease. We are entering or have entered the era of genetic susceptibility testing, the most common breast cancer genes that most people have heard of, BRCA1 and BRCA2. These are two genes that, when mutated, mean that a woman has a significantly higher rate of breast cancer in her lifetime, and if she already has breast cancer, a higher rate of additional cancer is coming. For, the, for those patients, often then, uh, breast conserving surgery with breast preservation is not a great option for people who are genetically predisposed, and it may be such that they're better treated uh, long-term with a double mastectomy. Now, that's a minority of breast cancer patients. That's not the majority of patients. That's a special subset of breast cancer patients that have these germline mutations that require special attention. I'll talk briefly about MRI because MRI is a, is a fairly new advanced uh, breast screening tool. Uh, it's a breast cancer screening tool beyond mammograms and sonograms. It can occasionally find occult disease, so an MRI could find disease that the mammogram and ultrasound didn't see. So uh, frequently the MRI is done. The downside to the MRI, and it's a very good test, the downside is false alarms and scares, such that sometimes the MRI can find additional things that need to be biopsied that turn out not to be cancer, but it can cause fears. So if a woman is set for a lumpectomy and the MRI finds these other things that needs biopsies, sometimes that would make a woman maybe consider a mastectomy, but that might not be necessary because many of these other things will turn out not to be cancer. So the thing that favors breast conserving surgery, we talked about some of the obstacles to breast conserving surgery, some of the reasons why it might be hard to get patients to accept breast conserving surgery, or it may be such that certain patients with genetic mutations can have breast conserving surgery. There are certainly some things in the favor of breast conserving surgery. First of all, long-term clinical trial results. This is a 20-year study that was published years ago, uh, as far back as 2002, where patients were, with breast cancer were randomly assigned to lumpectomy with radiation or mastectomy. And they took their assignment and were told which treatment to have, and now we have 20-year results. And if you looked at the curves, either disease-free survival or overall survival, all of those curves pretty much show identical outcomes, identical survival rates. The chances of beating breast cancer and being alive 20 years later is similar or nearly identical in patients who have had lumpectomy versus mastectomy. So that's a check in the column in favoring lumpectomy. The second thing is smaller tumors. Uh, as we develop more sophisticated screening tools, we find smaller tumors. Tumors that are smaller are more amenable to lumpectomy. You can take out a smaller tumor with less cosmetic deformity or less deformity to the breast than you can with larger tumors. So because of ongoing screening and more sophisticated screening, our ability to find smaller tumors that enables us to more confidently offer lumpectomy as an alternative to mastectomy. Another advance is hypofractionated post-lumpectomy radiation, where we give more radiation dose, dose in each session so we can narrow the time from four weeks of radiation from seven weeks of radiation. And that's more appealing to women. The radiation typically is Monday through Friday now for four weeks. Each treatment takes about five minutes, but it's a little bit of an inconvenience getting there. But we think we've made breast conserving surgery and lumpectomy alternative uh, uh, and actually a more uh, acceptable option because we've been able to shorten the duration of radiation. Another recent advance, this is a, a study that shows the, actually the results of the hypofractionated dose. And if you look at local recurrence rates with the new radiation versus the old, those are those two lines going up. They're both in the range of about 7% over 12 years, 6 or 7%, with no difference between the newer radiation technique, the shorter technique, and the previous radiation technique. Again, in terms of survival, the two, two lines are almost superimposed, 
no difference in long-term survival whether people use the standard radiation regimen for seven weeks or the newer four-week hypofractionated radiation. We can talk about onchoplastic lumpectomy, which is another nice alternative for women. Uh, some women um, are full-breasted. Maybe they've always wanted to have a breast reduction. Maybe they never uh, got to it, or maybe it wouldn't be covered by insurance. We now can find women who are large and full-breasted who might still be deformed by a lumpectomy, and we can offer them a lumpectomy in conjunction with bilateral reduction mammoplasties. So we can preserve symmetry of the two sides. If you do lumpectomy on one side, then we also do a symmetry operation on the other side. And this can be done all together with the first operation in conjunction with the plastic surgeons that might give women a breast appearance enhancement and may give them an operation they've always wanted. It may preserve symmetry between the breast that had cancer and the breast that didn't. And this is a very nice option for selected women uh, with breast cancer. Not all women are suitable for this, but it's a nice alternative to offer people to mastectomy. The other opportunity we have to promote breast conserving surgery and, and to offer that as an alternative to mastectomy is neoadjuvant chemotherapy for large tumors. Neoadjuvant meaning chemotherapy given before surgery. Sometimes a woman comes with a large tumor. The large tumor is less suitable for lumpectomy. Many women with large tumors then have a mastectomy because it's hard to get the breast to look right if you do a lumpectomy for a large tumor. But we do have very sophisticated drugs nowadays. If we give the chemotherapy before surgery in certain types of cancers, not all cancers, certain types of cancers, we can really shrink the tumor down considerably and make a larger tumor a smaller tumor and take a woman who would have needed a mastectomy and then be able to offer her a lumpectomy. So neoadjuvant chemotherapy for larger tumors has also converted some women from the necessity of mastectomy to the ability to have lesser surgery in breast conserving surgery. The final thing that I have listed here is lumpectomy uh, margin consensus. So uh, the idea of doing a lumpectomy for a lumpectomy to be successful and for the woman to move on and get radiation, the margins have to be clean. So the pathologist looks at the tissue and we get a report a week later that describes whether the edges or the margins of the lumpectomy are cancer free. Well, it used to be that surgeons would maybe look for a millimeter or two millimeters or, or even more and take bigger pieces out. And if there were close margins, then they'd go back a lot of times and have to do a second lumpectomy, which still can happen. But of course, you can understand if you do second or even a third lumpectomy to get clear margins, there's more deformity. And it's, and it's harder for a woman to understand and accept. Well, in recent years, there's been new margin consensus or actually reinforcement of prior margin consensus that the margin is permitted to be very close. It can be almost touching the ink. So cancer cells under the microscope can almost be touching the inked margin. As long as there's no tumor on the ink, then usually radiation is enough to handle it. And we know that wider margins do not significantly lower risk. And the routine practice to obtain wider negative margins does not appear to be beneficial and probably unnecessarily removes breast tissue that doesn't need to be removed. So we, can, we think we can do smaller margins. We've lowered our tolerance for close margins without any detriment to breast cancer recurrence. This is... Um, an adjusted sample of patients who have initially had lumpectomy. And if you look at 2013 to 2015, particularly the gray box, the gray box is patients who have had lumpectomy and then a second lumpectomy called a re-excision. You, you can see that line, it's sloped down. And because of the new margin consensus, less people are needing a second lumpectomy or a re-excision of the margin. The Choosing Wisely campaign, uh, is interesting. It's a, a national uh, campaign by the uh, American Board of Internal Medicine where each specialty has sort of thrown out a few guidelines or tossed out for people to see 
uh, new guidelines that we should focus on and that maybe surgeons from all corners of the country can agree on. And if you look on uh, number four, it says for breast cancer, do not routinely reoperate on patients with invasive cancer if the cancer is close to the edge. So as long as it's negative, it can be close to the edge and there's no reason to reoperate. And then that's easier for a woman to have one lumpectomy surgery uh, than multiple lumpectomy surgeries. Finally, this is a, again a summary of what we've talked about. We talked briefly about epidemiology, steady incidence, lower mortality. We talked about the movement from mastectomy to breast conserving therapy. We talked about some of the obstacles in that movement, some of the obstacles uh, of, towards the movement from mastectomy to lumpectomy. But we also talked about opportunities and new opportunities for women to have lumpectomy as an alternative to mastectomy. And in terms of future directions, uh, earlier detection techniques, maybe a liquid biopsy, a liquid biopsy meaning like a blood test to see if you had cancer. We don't really have that yet. There are certain types of cancer where we're looking at a liquid biopsy. Remember, most biopsies are tissue biopsies, right? So you have a, a colon biopsy or a breast biopsy from the actual tissue. These are quote unquote biopsy techniques that are liquid biopsies looking for markers in the blood that would say whether or not you have cancer. Another possible future direction is lumpectomy implants. Right now, the only implants that are available would be to replace the entire breast. So there are whole breast implants for a woman who has had a mastectomy. But wouldn't it be nice if we could do a lumpectomy and the space or the hole made after the lumpectomy surgery could be filled with a lumpectomy implant? That technology is not currently available, but maybe someday it would be. Finally, there's a, a, a good movement towards different types of percutaneous ablative technologies. What that means is leaving the tumor in the breast and doing something externally to kill the tumor in the breast without removing it surgically without an operation. Some people have put probes in to the tumor through the skin and use microwave current. Some people are using cryotherapy where they uh, freeze the tumor inside the breast. Other people are, have started using focused ultrasound treatment where the ultrasound pulses can kill the tumor in the breast. These are techniques that are being developed whereby hopefully someday, we're not there yet, so nobody should run out looking for this as a treatment for their cancer, but there's a lot of developing technologies that hopefully someday would permit annihilation of the tumor in the breast without an operation cutting to remove it. Conclusions, many women have multiple options for breast cancer treatment. Women have different perspectives, priorities, and treatment goals. Breast surgeons, we breast surgeons, should use all available resources to design and offer an opportunity for breast conserving surgery when possible. However, the final treatment plan, either lumpectomy or mastectomy, is a personal decision. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you. Uh, we look forward to your questions. Uh, you can email them to the uh, email address you see here above. And I'd like to thank you for your attention. And I wish you all very well.